Good morning. Good morning. Good to see all of you this morning. Welcome to worship. Hopefully those of you uh, online can see and hear me as well. Just as I, as I say that, Facebook has made some changes um, and we are not able to stream the way we have. So uh, if you're looking at me, you're probably at YouTube on there now um, and we provided some links for that. So if you all hear somebody saying, I don't know what happened at church today, the Facebook thing wouldn't work. Facebook has changed stuff and, and uh, our, our top people, literally our top people here at church that know how to do this stuff are working on it. Uh, I believe it's working through YouTube. I hope so. Again, hopefully good morning. So please just share that, pass that on. We put announcements on Facebook and things like that to let people know the, about uh, Facebook's changes and hopefully we'll have it resolved uh, already today. So uh, with that, we gather this Advent season to continue to receive God's gifts. Please rise. Let's greet those around us and start with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, God who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll recite the Ten Commandments together as part of our preparation. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. 
You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Take a moment of reflection on our sins and our need for the forgiveness of Jesus. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. O Lord, let the lighting of these candles signify that you are the light that shines in all the darkness of our lives. As we wait, watch, hope, and pray. Guide us all to reflect your light and to let it shine through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's rise as we pray together. <coughs> Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together confessing our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. All right, we have begun a new memory verse, and so I'll invite you to join with me as we practice today. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. All right, now I'll invite Pastor Josh up for this morning's announcements. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, a few things going on, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, of course, we have our midweek Advent services at 1210 and 630. Love to see everybody there at those. Uh, today, we have the Children's Christmas Eve practice going on at 1 o'clock. Here, again, next week, it'll be uh, the same time every Sunday. Uh, for our, in preparation for our um, children's Christmas Eve pageant on, on, well, Christmas Eve. That's why it's the Christmas Eve pageant. Um, uh, there will also be youth Christmas caroling this evening at 5.30. All junior and senior high youth are invited to attend. Um, and then this Thursday, December 14th at 6.30 p.m., we will have a special called voters meeting uh, to vote on the next moves for the, the ECC and the, the building project that we have going on there. And uh, last but not least, I want to draw everyone's attention to the uh, blackboard over there by the stage in the fellowship hall. Uh, this week, I was contacted by a social worker from Giddings ISD who said that she had a family in need this Christmas, a family that had fallen on hard times. I've spoken with the family. They seem like good folks that have just had a, a, a tough run of it lately. Um, and so uh, I offered to have our church family help that family this Christmas. They have four kids, and without our help, they won't be able to provide a Christmas for their children. And so uh, what we have done is set up um, a, a tree shape. I, I can see that there have already been some ornaments taken off of it. Praise be to God for that. Uh, but there are things over there, toys for their kids, diapers for their newborns, wipes, things like that. Uh, on your way out, if you would, just pull an ornament off that tree and then throughout the week, throughout the next couple of weeks, uh, go out, purchase whatever ornament you buy, bring it back so that we can provide this local family with, uh, with a Christmas, because um, that's what we do. We want to make sure everybody is able to enjoy this season with their family. So I invite everybody to grab one of those ornaments, bring it back so we can uh, help this family out. Um, with that, we will continue with the uh, bringing forward of our offering.
Please rise as we go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we give you these offerings, we pray you would accept them to your praise and glory, that you would use them to further the needs of your kingdom. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to send your spirit upon us, that we would give back to you that portion that you, that you call for us to, or that we would trust you that in giving back, you continue to bless us. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine that we would be saved. As you led Joseph like a, like a flock, so now by your son lead us into straight paths. Bring us out of the bondage of our sin and plant us securely in your eternal promises. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, you sent John the Baptist to herald the coming Messiah and proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In these latter days, you send pastors to proclaim the same repentance for the forgiveness of sins and through them lead your people to trust in your salvation. Look with kindness upon all pastors that they would be diligent and faithful heralds of your beloved Son. To that, Lord, we lift up our other ministry partners. Uh, we, we pray for Red Apple School of Peace Lutheran Church in Hearst, Texas, of Fishers of Men Church in Port Isabel, and Redeemer Lutheran in Charleston, West Virginia. Lord, continue to support these congregations and their ministries as they proclaim your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are gone like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in earthly rulers. Give us leaders who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life, that you may live, that we may all live peaceably in godly quietness and honesty. Today, Lord, as we live in that peace and quiet, we, we rejoice and lift up to many who are celebrating. We give thanks for Sharon, with Sharon Collins and Julie Meachin as they celebrate birthdays. We lift up our Train Up a Child campaign as we continue to look forward to serving the, the children and families of this community. We pray for that voters meeting coming up, that your will be done. Lord, we lift up to you our principal call process. We thank you for the Board of Christian Day School and all those who have been engaged in this process. We ask you to continue to bless them as they discern uh, who you desire to be the next principal of our school. Lord, we pray for all of our newly elected church officers and those who have been uh, elected to positions of service in this congregation. We give thanks to them and pray your blessings on the years ahead. And Lord, for those who, who have served and continue to serve, we thank you for that willingness to, to, to do those things, to serve this congregation and community, and pray your continued blessings on them. Lord, in your mercy. Give ear, O Shepherd of Israel, to our prayers. We pray especially for Denise James, Teresa Krause, Dorothy Cook, Karen McDougal, Dar uh, David McCombs, and Johnny Bradshaw, and any others that we name silently before you now. Lord, we pray that you would give healing, courage, and perseverance to all who cry to you, that they would find comfort in your word and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we know that you're not slow in keeping your promises, and we thank you for your patience. Do not take your spirit from us when we stray from your commandments, but convict us of our sin and draw us back to you in repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, as we in the church on earth wait for the coming of your Son, we remember all the saints who have gone before us, who now rest in your presence. Keep us safe in your arms until you gather your people together in the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness will dwell. Lord, we lift up today those families who grieve, who are in your prayer, and those, uh, those folks you have called home. We pray for Lynn Lehman and D Dwayne Schwewart. Lord, as you uh, have called them, we pray that you give comfort to the families who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know we need, grant, Father, for the sake of him who has died and risen again, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Our 
Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 40, and you will hear some of the words from this portion of Isaiah echoed in our gospel reading today. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3, and he writes, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as, as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, And then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, We are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as you're able for our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him, and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. For the children's message, you can come on up. Good morning. How's everyone this morning? Good. 
Um, I have a question for you. How many of you like to have people over to your house? Yeah, it's kind of a fun thing, right? To have friends or visitors come to our house. Um, now, another question. How many of you live with an adult who, whenever people are about to come to your house, they get a little, a little intense about cleaning up and getting the house ready for people to come over? Even if your house is clean. They're like, we gotta pick this up, we gotta do that. <laughs> we gotta do this, we gotta do that, right? And they have a whole list of everything that needs done. All of a sudden, things that don't ever have to get cleaned have to be cleaned, like, like the, the ridge inside the window, <coughs> right? Or, or that's the time to clean out the entire refrigerator and scrub everything down. All right, we do, when, when we know that people are coming to our, our home, we end up with a whole list of things that we have to do to get ready for them, right? Our readings today talk to us about John the Baptist, who is easily one of my favorite people in the Bible because he's so different and such a wild guy. Like, he eats bugs. <coughs> and I don't, none of you seem too surprised or, or appalled by that, but he lives in the desert and he eats bugs. And he gives the people a message <coughs> about Jesus. He says, I'm the one, the Bible tells us that someone is coming to get ready for Jesus to come, to prepare his way, to like kind of clean house, but not really, he lives in the desert. He doesn't have a house to clean, right? But he does have a message of getting ready for Jesus to come and kind of not really cleaning up a house, but maybe cleaning up our behavior. Maybe thinking about um, what does God actually ask of us? Because the people had for so many years been, been doing things that they weren't supposed to do. And what God actually wants of his people had kind of gotten lost in there. And so John the Baptist's job was to get everyone ready for Jesus to come. And he had some messages that aren't really different when we read the Bible and we see what God says. But for the people... It was different because it was different than what they were being taught. He says, here are the things that God says that we should do. And we could make a whole long list of that, right? Not because God requires us to act in a certain way, but because God created us to be certain people. Right? He designed people to live and to act in a certain way, and we haven't been doing that. So John the Baptist's job was to say, hey, everybody, guess what? The Savior is coming, and we have some work to do. And so he's kind of a, a like key biblical figure for this season of Advent as we um, prepare for Christmas and prepare for Jesus to come. We be reminded of John the Baptist's message that says, hey, the Savior is coming, and we have some things to work on while we wait for that. All right? That's what we're doing this season. We're preparing for Jesus to come. But you don't have to clean your house to do it. Let's fold our hands and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your promise of sending us a savior. Help us to prepare and to look to you for what we should be doing while we wait. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. You guys can head back to your seats.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, grant to me your Holy Spirit that my words would be your words. Grant to your people your Holy Spirit that they would hear your words and be edified by them. In Jesus' name, amen. Mark 1, verse 7. After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. In our gospel reading this week, Mark reminds us that John the Baptist was a redirection specialist. John the Baptist was always redirecting anyone who would listen away from himself and towards the Messiah, towards Jesus. After all, he is the one who's famous for saying, he must increase, I must increase decrease. Everything that John the Baptist did pointed towards the one who was greater, the one who was coming, the one who had come in human flesh. Everything that John the Baptist did redirected toward Jesus. What might it look like if we lived our lives the same way? If in all things we were redirecting or or directing people toward Jesus? You see, we are redirection specialists also, but more often than not, we do it in a, in a negative way, and, uh, we being the entire human race. John the Baptist was a redirection specialist in a good way, but we tend to do it in a negative way. And to, to prove my point, to show that it goes back to the very beginning, I want you to take out your, your Bibles, pull out your phone. By the way, this is something that we're going to be doing fairly often from now on, is pulling out our Bibles during the worship service. And turn to Genesis chapter 3. If you're using the Pew Bible, that is on page 3. Genesis chapter 3. So after Adam and Eve had disobeyed the Lord and ate the fruit from the tree that God had told them not to eat from, God came down to them He comes to them, he calls them to him, and he begins speaking to them, questioning why they have done this thing. And so I'm going to work backwards a little bit. I'm going to start with Eve and then work backwards to Adam. So starting at at Genesis 3, verse 13, uh, then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So you see what she did there. She redirects the blame off of herself and towards the serpent. So it's not her fault, it's the serpent's fault. In essence, she's saying, the devil made me do it. Backing up a little bit, let's go to uh, verse 11. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. So Adam here, again, passes the buck. He redirects the blame once again. First, well, not first, but, but he, he redirects it to Eve. She gave me the fruit. It's her fault that I even had the fruit in the first place, but he doesn't just stop there. He redirects the blame onto God himself, the woman whom you gave to be here with me. If you hadn't put this woman here, this never would have happened. God, this is all your fault. We have been redirection specialists from the beginning. We've all been there. We've all had those moments in our lives where we say, this isn't my fault, when in fact, it actually probably is. And the culture just reinforces this this redirection, this casting of blame, this passing of the buck. This time of year, there's a, there's, there's a, a, a phrase that we hear all the time that Christians like to say, and it's a good one, uh, remember the reason for the season. The entire reason we have to have that phrase is because too often we forget the reason for the season. The culture redirects us from where our attention should be to where it wants the attention to be. Christmas is no longer about Jesus coming to earth to join with humanity, to take away the sin of the world, to to redirect God's wrathful gaze against sin. Instead, Christmas has become about Santa Claus and Frosty the Snowman and the Grinch. 
you don't believe me, just drive around and look at Christmas lights. My family and I did that last week. And there were a few nativity scenes here and there, but by far, Santa and Frosty and the Grinch outnumbered them multiple times over. And now, I, I like these characters. I like Santa. I like Frosty. I like the Grinch. If you have them in your yard, I'm not telling you to take them down. What I'm pointing out here is that because of the, the prevalence, the, the, the overwhelming presence of these characters, as opposed to the simple nativity scene, even we sometimes tend to forget the reason for the season. We are redirected away from where our attention should be. If we were Adam and Eve standing before God, and we are Adam and Eve, we do, we will stand before God, but if he was asking us, why did you pick these Christmas lights, we might even say, well, the culture, everyone is doing it. The culture which you, God, have allowed in this world, everyone is doing it, God. This is actually your fault because you didn't put a stop to it. Instead of that, though, we should be confessing our sins just like those who are coming to John the Baptist, being baptized, confessing their sins because those who know that they are sinful and unclean know that Jesus is the great redirection specialist. The entire reason that Jesus came was to redirect God's wrathful gaze against sin and to take that wrath upon himself. John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. The wrath of God remains on him, remains on him. Jesus redirected that wrath, which was meant for you, to himself. On the cross, Jesus felt the full wrath of God against sin. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He did it for you. You are the reason he was forsaken. This season of Advent is a reminder that Jesus came and that Jesus will come again. And that when he does come again, God's wrathful gaze against sin will be poured out on the unbelieving world, but not on you. When God turns his wrathful gaze against sin in your direction, Jesus will stand between you and the Father and say, not this one, not this one. I took care of this one on the cross. Jesus will redirect that wrath from you again onto himself. You have already been taken care of. God's wrath against you has already been redirected. Earlier I asked what it might look like if we lived our lives directed in the right direction towards the person to whom it sh we should be directed. That is Jesus Christ. And it would look a lot like today, this morning, this service, where we come together and we say, most merciful God, we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Instead of redirecting the blame, we know where the blame lies. On our heads, at our feet, and in our heart. We know exactly where the blame is supposed to be. But this is where the great redirection comes in. But for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. That's what life looks like when you're redirecting the blame where it's supposed to be, or directing it where it's supposed to be on you, but redirecting the wrath of God against sin where it's 
already been poured out on the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, your Savior who came for you and who is coming for you again. So yeah, remember the reason for the season. He must increase, we must decrease. In his name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <clears throat>